Hello, this is David, and today we are going to do our basic setup tutorial. So here we have our ELC El Paz local controller. It's connected to a junction box fed by a power supply of 12 volts. We've got two LF beacons, some cables, and a tag. So let's uh, go into our software star star and go to setup. We've already added our clients so now we're going to add our reader. So add by type and we're going to choose the RF reader IP ELC. We could do a network scan. In my case that's going to return a bunch of readers in our, my office or alternatively we can do identify with tamper and then press the tamper switch on the beacon. Ah, we don't have our ethernet cable on. So let's connect ethernet. Uh, okay, ethernet's connected. And now we press and we get it in the software. We're gonna select it and click OK. Hit apply. And let's watch the initialization in the status tab of the reader. Here, a little click on the on the controller, and we're all complete. We're going to have a blue online indication. We can beep it, and it's got a DHCP address. All is fine. You can do fixed or static IP if you'd like. Now, another thing we can do here is in the inputs, let's say use inputs and use external IO inputs, apply that. We now have in our database all of the um, onboard input as well as the inputs that appear that are on the expansion card. And outputs do the same. So we now have output one, output two, those are on the motherboard, the buzzer of course, and the three relay outputs. Let's call uh, relay number three uh, door lock uh, one, let's say. What we can do now, uh, go to the service board, outputs, add an output, and let's add door lock number one. And by clicking on this, okay, clicking on the icon that uh, activates the output, and then clicking again deactivates. You can see an LED turn on on the board when you do that. There it is. Goes on. Now it goes off. So we're able to, we see we've got control from the software via TCP IP of the controller. Fine. Uh, so we've got the reader. Let's give the reader a name. Okay. We're going to call it uh, MyRF. Okay, that could be named otherwise, let's say, uh, first floor west wing or something like that for a location when you're going to be using RF for location. Okay, now that we've got our uh, RF reader, we're going to also make sure that our antenna, of course, is vertical. We want to do that. We're going to enroll our badge. So we're going to go to badges and add by type. I'm going to select a badge. The badge would be used for any LPAS uh, badge, whether it be a bracelet or uh, an infant badge, uh, a loan worker, asset tag, whatever. They're all, they're all called badges. I'm going to use a button press and click on my button, and I got the ID here. So I hit apply, and we start seeing the message is coming through on the screen here. And I'm going to give a name of that uh, badge to Nurse Nancy. Okay. Good. So now I have my readers defined, my RF reader, and my badge is defined. I can give Nurse Nancy another icon if I want to, but this icon only appears in the EV2 client. I can give her a photo as well. 
There we go. That's me. If I now look at my badges screen, I see I've got Nurse Nancy. Location is my RF and is currently motionless. If I move the tag, then disease is going to move into a blue man walking, meaning it's in motion. If I push down on the big button, the B1 is going to go down. If I push down on the small button, the B2 is going to go down. Okay. I can now go into my setup and perform and define an alert. So let's add a group called Demo Alerts. All right. We can call it training alerts. And under there, I'm going to add by type. And let's use the LPAS badge alert. Okay. So I'm going to go if, let's go down and define a group of badges, okay? And we're going to call the group staff okay and let's move nurse Nancy into the staff group good go back to my alert uh, and I'm gonna call this uh, panic alarm okay we're gonna give it a message that uh, panic by badge, oops, that's a bug here, by badge at reader, okay? And if I go into my inputs, which I, where is where I define my alert criteria, I'm going to go for all the staff badges at any location, any status type. If I get, well, I can go to my in this case, the badge is specifically this kind of badge. And I'm going to go to badge large button pressed. Apply. Okay. And I'm going to have this alert automatically clear after 120 seconds, in case I forget to clear it. And I'm going to go to my outputs. In the outputs, I'm going to tell it where to send this alert. In this case, to all clients. I'm going to set an output so I can set, uh, let's say, my RF buzzer. And I'm going to set the duration of that to, let's say, two seconds. I, if I do not set a duration set to zero, and the duration is set to zero, it will continue to remain set until the alert is closed. And the alert closed will automatically reset the output. And I can play wave file. So this is what we'll, call, we'll play the attack on staff. Okay, and we can also play a second file. Let's say ring. I can test that. Attack on a staff member. So I got the buzzer, I got attack on a staff member, and the ring. Okay, good. So I've done that all. And now I'm going to go to my alert screen and press on the large button Attack on and I got my message member. panic by nurse Nancy at my RF I got uh, it's in the log it's in the banner of course if we send it to pagers or whatever that will learn off a bit later in the next step session we're going to set up our LF beacons and do some location with the tag so in this tutorial uh, we connected our ELC, El Paso Local Controller, we enrolled it in Iris, we enrolled a badge, we created groups uh, for the badges, we created a group for the alerts, we defined a new, a new alert for a panic alarm, we defined the criteria of that alert and what that outputs or what actions should be taken in the event of that alert. Thank you very much.